Uh, welcome everyone to uh, today's webinar. We appreciate you being here. Uh, let me move one thing out of the way here. And uh, we appreciate you being here. We, we know you're busy and take, we appreciate you taking time to be a part of the presentation. Wes and I have come up with some tips and tricks that hopefully allow everyone to go, wow, I didn't know we could do that with a pattern. And if you have any questions, uh, during this event, please put them into the chat and Wes and I are going to answer them at the end of the presentation. we got a lot to cover, so we're going to kind of go through it and then we'll come back. So uh, let's rock and roll from here. Um, presenters, uh, Wesley McMurtry, he's a CSWE. That means he's a certified SolidWorks expert. Uh, he is located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's left-handed as well as am I. And if you need to reach out to Wes, uh, there's a QR code here. There's also going to be a QR code on the back end where you can actually go in and uh, scan that QR and that'll take you directly to being able to contact Wes. And uh, I'm David Kersley. I'm located in Round Rock, Texas. Um, CSWE as well. Um, and again, there is my QR code on the bottom right. If you need to get in touch with me, you can. Again, both those QR codes will be on the final presentation screen as we are talking about uh, questions and answers. All right, so the agenda for today, we're gonna talk about pattern speed. And pattern speed, let's think about this. Everyone who's used SolidWorks and made large assemblies has opened up of that large assembly and wondered what's taken so long to open. And we've done quite a few webinars on large assemblies, but maybe we start drilling down and start to look at the parts, right? And, and maybe, it's at the part level and it's the pattern that's causing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at what's causing these end conditions that could affect the speed and also as well as how the pattern is created. In the next segment, we're gonna talk about up to reference. Wes has got a pretty awesome presentation. Wes is gonna make some patterns. He's gonna use configurations using the up to reference and using a couple of methods that will result in significantly different rebuild times. In our third segment, we're going to talk about creating a pattern without first creating the seed. So in most patterns, we do an extrude or a cut. In this instance, we're actually going to do create a pattern without creating the initial seed. We'll also take a look of how easy it is to edit that uh, uh, pattern and then how we can turn it into something pretty crazy. And last, Wes is going to show us some tips and tricks on patterns with whole wizard and weld mix. And in about five minutes, Wes is going to show you how he was able to create unique patterns with whole wizard and then turn it into about 190 plus part weld mix. So, Wes, you ready? Yes, yes, sir. All right, so let's dig into pattern speed, speed here. And again, Let's go through the scenario where we've opened up a large assembly. We have to figure out what's causing the delays. And sometimes it's re something really simple. So let's use this scenario today. We're opening up a pattern, uh, a large assembly, and it's taking a while to open. And I want to drill down. And I realize that one of the parts in there is kind of the culprit. And it's a pattern. So let's kind of look at the way patterns are created and how SolidWorks is interpreting them and how using different end conditions or design methodology to create these patterns will affect that speed. Okay. So right now, over on the left side, I've just got a basic plate. Uh, I'm using inch units, six by 20 by quarter inch thick. And I've just got a base plate sitting right here. Now, over on the left, I've got a couple predefined sketches I wanna show you. I'm gonna unsuppress the original sketch. In this first instance, what we want to do is take this sketch and we want to do a linear sketch pattern, okay? And so I'm going to set my coordinates, my spacing along the x-axis, and then in this case, the z-axis. And let's talk about the way SolidWorks is actually going to interpret this pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our, our instances, we're going to set our spacing, and it's going to be 19 instances along the x, five additional instances along the z. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this sketch and we're gonna pick our sketch entities. And as I pick each one, you can see the pattern being created. 
Now, when SOLIDWORKS goes to interpret this, it's going to interpret each one of these individual sketches. So when we go to do our extrude cut here, all we have to do is hit the S key here, and that's your shortcut manager. So if you're not used to using it, hit the S key, but the command you use most there. And when I hit extrude cut, I'm going to use the through all in condition. And another little nugget, if you hit the D key, it moves the confirmation center right to the end of your arrow pointer there. And we'll go back over that again in a little bit. So I made a pattern. Let's go to performance evaluation. And it took 0 0.44 seconds. So over on another screen, I'm, gonna, I'm recording these down and we'll play with the numbers here, but it took 85 seconds to build the cut extrude and it took 14.1% of the time to resolve it, okay? So 0.44. Now, is there a faster way? So in order for to me to do a comparison, I need to suppress this original feature. But what's important in this case, if you're doing a comparison, suppress the sketch as well. Otherwise, SOLIDWORKS will look at the original sketch that we just did there, and it will add that time back in. So let's unsuppress this original one. We're going to do a cut, and we're going to say through all. And we got our original seed cut here. Okay, this is creating a pattern with our seed cut. So there's a nice little diamond pattern. And we're going to go create the same exact pattern, only this time we're going to use linear pattern, not a linear sketch pattern. So my direction one is going to be along the X axis, just like it was before. One inch spacing, 19 instances. I'm going to pick the Z axis on our plate here. Again, one in five. And then from the fly out feature tree under features and faces, I'm just going to go add that cut extrude. And what's happening is now SOLIDWORKS, when it goes to make this cut, it's not going in and recreating each one of these sketches. It's copying this, this feature here, okay? So now I've got 19 by five. I've got the same pattern I had before, but if I go to performance evaluation, look at my rebuild time. It's 0 0.05 seconds. And that's pretty crazy. So we went from 0.44, almost half a second, down to 0 0.05 seconds. And if you look at the speed on there, most of it was built in the pattern itself. Often what you can do, depending on the model you have, maybe you have multi-body, maybe you're not, you can play around with these end conditions, whether it's up to next or up to surface. If I switch it to up to surface, do I see any difference in the rebuild time? So as a designer, we're trying to figure out which is the fastest and best method, not only to design the part, but what's gonna be fastest in an assembly, What's also going to be the fastest here in my multi-body part if I have one, okay? So let's go over here to this little screen here, and I'm going to do some comparison. And this little red box here, this is my seed cut where we did up to surface. And it's directly proportional and the same exact speed as linear pattern through all, right? So these two are equal. And if we look at this seed cut and we compare the times, we can see that the seed cut with the linear sketch pattern was 0 0.44 seconds right? So let's think about this scenario. What if I've got an assembly that's dragging and opening, and I've got 20 instances of this part? So the first method where I use the seed cut through all, or even the up to surface, 20 instances is going to take about one second to open on that rebuild time, right? On the 0 0.44, and I've got 20, that's 8.8 .8 seconds to build or rebuild that part. So if we just do a little math, we can see that if we take the 4.4 divided by 0 0.05, multiply it by 100, guess what? We end up being, which is a crazy number, 888% faster. So when we're thinking about this and we're creating patterns and we're creating these parts, you know, keep in mind how they're created. Keep in mind how they're uh, being interpreted from the SOLIDWORKS side of it. And when you look at it and you say, well, you know, 0 0.44 seconds isn't a whole lot. But when you start adding that to 20 instances in your assembly, it starts to build up. So kind of take these little tips and tricks here about understanding the performance evaluation, and hopefully they help you out a little bit. Okay, on to the next one. Wes, I'm gonna let you take over on up to reference and we'll go from okay. there. All right, thanks Dave. So yep, we're gonna do a patterning using up to references and some other tips and tricks for accomplishing this. So. Uh, let's go ahead and start on that. So we're going to start off with just a relatively simple uh, part. I'm calling it this a post. It's just a uh, it's just an extruded profile. Uh, it has a, has a sketch that I've already put in there. We're going to we're going to put an extruded cut in this uh, in this sketch. So we're doing a little bit of 
sketching and creating features here before we get into the patterns. And I just use a through all cut. It's kind of your standard, hey, no big deal. We're going to just do an extruded cut, basic straight kind of part. Now we're going to go, though, and one of the tips here, if you've never done this before, I'm using the control key to copy that feature, that cut extrude three that we see there. I'm dragging that, and I'm going to select on that uh, or drop it on that planar face there. We can see now we have a copied uh, feature on the side of our part there now. So but I do need to go in. I didn't bring in the relations that it needed to actually locate it. So I'm going to pick and choose my center line here. And I'm using symmetry for the option to control the, the distance between the circle and the center line. And we'll add a, uh, a dimension here uh, to get that set located. Now we're fully defined and it's exactly where I want those two, uh, those two new holes that we just created. So that was a quick, simple copy using the control key to drag out and drop onto another area. So that's one way to, to set up patterns as well, a quick and easy way to just copy features there. So we're going to go in now, we're going to look at the linear pattern and we're going to be using the up to reference uh, option here instead of spacing and instances. So to do that, we can select a face or an edge for the direction. And then for our second option that we need to choose, we're going to choose the reference edge or face. And in this case, we're choosing the face. It needs to be a planar face if it's a face though. And we'll look at some of the options here real quick and kind of just scan through here. We do, we want to change our units. We're going to space those each out at two inches. And we also need, you notice we're not getting a preview yet. And this is something I always forget to do is features and faces. You need to have that selected to actually see what we're patterning. So once I do that, we're going to go to the flyout tree and choose those two features that we just put the cuts in, in our modelers. Now we can see our model has now been updated. We're just looking at the preview. We'll go ahead and say okay to that. And we'll get the uh, the pattern that we're looking for. Now that's the after reference, so it, it basically went all the way to the edge of the reference there that I chose. Now the advantage of doing that is uh, is uh, it's going to follow that reference no matter what. So we're going to look first though at the performance evaluation. We're going to look at the total rebuild time in seconds was 0.12. So remember that number. We'll look at that again here in just a minute. And uh, a quick tip here, uh, we're going to double or we're going to right click on that dimension there. And from there, if you've never done this before, you can configure straight from here. So if I right click on a dimension, select configure dimension, and that'll bring up the configuration manager. So now we're going to create a couple of configurations. I'll make a six foot configuration, type in the appropriate value for that. It's taking me a second here. There we go. We got it. We got it lit up now. And populate it. So now let's change that value. There we go. And we'll put an eight foot configuration in there. So, quick way, a really quick way to modify or add configurations to your, to your part files is just simply right clicking on that dimension. It takes you straight into the configuration manager and uh, you're, you're off to the races there. And we're also going to create a, uh, give it a table name. It's not required to do this, but it's a nice touch to have this. Uh, saving this table and we'll apply it and say okay and now we're going to take a look at the different configurations and we'll activate let's go ahead and get into the configuration there we go so we're going to double click to activate the eight foot configuration you can see now it's basically we've doubled in length and so did the pattern so the pattern doubled or followed that reference as 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 we thought it would. So that's the advantage of using up to reference. Now we can see that it has uh, pretty much doubled in times, which is kind of what we would expect uh, for this sort of thing. So a pattern creating, we've doubled the number of, of uh, things. Now remember, we've used a, th a through all cut. So it's not really considering uh, what's going on with our land. But we're going to turn on the geometry pattern option for this. Though. And what that does is it copies, but it does not solve the pattern feature. So the end conditions are ignored. So each instance is an exact copy of the faces and or edges of the original feature. So if we go back and look at this, even with the uh, geometry option turned on and basically simplifying it, it really didn't make a big difference. And part of that is through the fact that we used the through all cuts. So it's not determining the end phase and having to calculate that each and every time. So we didn't see a performance gain there of much. So we're going to look at next uh, here in just a second. We'll find it. The another post that's identical except for I use the whole wizard 
could put the holes in our pattern here. So um, we're going to take a look at it. It's an eight foot post, same number of holes, except we used the hole wizard. So it's up to 0.55, almost double what the original part there. Now let's go look at the pattern and see what's going on with that. We can see geometry patterns turned off on this one as well. And we'll say okay to this one. And we'll say, and we'll take a look at this and see what the difference is. And this is due to the fact that it's not having to calculate two different sketches that the whole wizard creates uh, in these patterns here. So it's skipping all this, just taking that first instance of the first feature and literally just, just copying it. So if there are any variations in depth or length or surface curvatures, it's going to repeat that pattern regardless of so but in this part it's a fairly linear part so we're not seeing we did see a big drop in that just to the fact it's not calculating uh, this each and every sketch there so big difference that's kind of a kind of eye opener for me as well when i was working on these and uh, that's kind of what we wanted to show you all was to kind of keep an eye on on those you know wes every time you show me that it's funny um you and I have been working on this for a couple of weeks, and every time you show the drag and drop of the feature onto the model, I go, "Why don't I? Why doesn't that ever stick with me?" That's that's an awesome little tip and trick that was super cool, as well as geometry pattern. So now we've kind of seen some some different ways to create some patterns. That was awesome, Wes. Thanks. I can't wait to see the next one. All right. So let me ask those uh, folks out there in attendance and. Have you ever created a pattern or can you create a pattern without creating the seed first? In other words, the cut or the extrude? Answer is yes. So let's take a look of how we might do that. I'm going to create a pattern uh, without creating the seed first. Okay. And where's the advantage to this? And the advantage to this comes in on change because unfortunately change happens, right? I wish I could say that there was never a change action that ever came through, but they do, right? So how do we edit the change? How do we edit the pattern shape? How do we edit the seed and the pattern? Is there an easier way? And hopefully you'll see this and this will make it a little easier for you and inspire you to make something cool. So, all right, so we've seen this plate. I showed this when we were doing uh, seed uh, uh, speed comparisons, right? Six by 20, quarter inch thick. So. I'm going to use control tab and I'm going to switch over here to this model right here. This is the model we're going to end up with. And this is a pretty crazy little part. I will be doing a webinar on this. I'm in the process of making this into a light. So there will be some additional content coming on this. But control tab, if you have two SolidWorks files open, allows you to go back and forth. I use the S key and the quick command manager. And so what I've got is I got this flat plate and I got a sketch profile that I want my part to curve through. I'm going to hit the S key. I'm going to hit hide show. Now this plate right here, I'm going to pick this face and I want to put a pattern on it, but I'm not going to create a, the seed feature first. How do I do that? Go to features under linear pattern, look for fill pattern. SolidWorks is going to look at the face that we select. And based on the settings we use over here on the left, it's going to create the pattern. I can do a perforation. I can do a circular pattern, a square pattern, which we're going to use today, and we're going to use a polygon. This first box is center to center horizontal. This one, center to center vertical in this orientation on this model. I'm superstitious. I always clear this and re-pick the edge. Why? Because it's worked in the past and I want to make sure it works today while you're watching in. So if I come down to full preview, I don't see a pattern. And you're like, Dave, I don't see a pattern. Where am I gonna get the pattern? Under features and faces, hit the down arrow, check the box and click this button right here, create seed cut. And notice I now have a pattern on this face. I've got a, I can create a circular pattern. I can create the pattern being a square, a diamond or some version of a polygon. Do I need it to be a triangle? I can. I can also create this into maybe a pentagon. And then all I have to do is edit the variables to control the size. And so SolidWorks has recognized this face profile and has put in a square pattern. I'm going to use 5 8 for the length of that edge. This looks good. Again, I'm going to hit my D key, and that's your quick key to automatically move the uh, confirmation center right to the end of your mouth. So if you look at it, 
This is good. So I just created a pattern without ever creating a seed feature. What about my time? I'm at 0.17 seconds. When we did the pattern earlier, we were at 0 0.05 and 0 0.44. Wes just showed us one at 0 0.25, 0 0.17. So we're pretty close. Here's where the advantages come in. What if I want to change this diamond to a circular shape? All I have to do is go back, edit the feature, set the diameter, hit the green check. Okay, and I just changed that diamond to a circular pattern. So I've got a few shapes I can play with here, and this is pretty awesome, right? So what else can I do? Let's say I got a change order coming in, and I need to put a big chamfer on these corner plates. I'm going to right click, edit the feature, and guess what I can do? If I scroll down here on the left side, under instances to skip, I can actually turn off where that first one was created. So try and create or suppress that seed feature if you had done a seed and then pattern the seed. When you suppress the seed, you just suppress the whole pattern, right? So now if I wanted to put my big chamfer in on these two corners here, and I'll just kind of give a, a, a reason, uh, an overview, like that would cut right through there. This is a preview of where that would cut right through that hole. And more than likely, it wouldn't have created the chamfer anyway. It would have errored out, okay? So saw so how easy that was to control the instances, right? So if I come back in here, instances to skip, I can say clear all, and that brings them all back on. Very easy, again, and I changed the shape. The only thing I changed is shape, and I went from 0.13 seconds, 0.17 seconds to 0.08. So I'm much faster with this shape. Okay, so let's take a look at our plate. And I've got these two circular bodies that I need to curve this plate around. And I'm gonna create, I want the pattern that's on that plate existing to go onto the surface that's kind of this S shape that we see here. So how in the world are we ever gonna do that? Okay, so pick this face here and we're gonna do, pick this and do copy or offset surface. Okay, right now it says offset. And when I pick this top face, I wanna create a copy. So if I put in zero, it's basically gonna create an exact copy of that face and it changes to copy surface, okay? And so I can come in here and I can hide the original body and there's my pattern on that surface. So now what I need to do is I need to get that surface to that shape. The way I can do that, one way we can do this is with the deform tool, okay? I'm gonna use curve to curve. My first instance is gonna be this horizontal line here. My second curve is going to be the S shape we created, okay? I'm gonna pick the uniform button and I'm gonna pick this button here. It says, what surface do I wanna shape, turn? I'm gonna pick that one, everything looks good, hit the green check. And now think about what we did. We've created this pattern and we've now put it onto this curved surface, but I wanna curve it again. What happens if you know, we just start to tinker, right? That's the beauty of our jobs. We can sometimes tinker and see what happens. So let's try and bend this surface one more time using the deform tool and see how our pattern reacts. So if I do that, I pick this, everything looks good. Green check, fingers crossed, three sprigs of holy water. There's my, there's my surface. So I'm gonna turn off the sketches. Now I got this surface. I'm gonna hit the thicken tool, pick this and you can thicken to either side, however you wanna do it. I just need to turn this into a solid body. So I'm taking this from a surface into a solid body. And let's take a look at our sketch and we can see that we've got curvature. Everything looks pretty cool, right? That's pretty wild how we can do that with just some patterns, okay. Unfortunately, change does happen, right? So what if I ran flow sim on it and I wasn't getting enough air, I wanna change the pattern. If I right click on the fill pattern and I come down and I change this circle to a diamond and I set it to that five eighths that we started with, what do you guys think is gonna happen? Is it gonna update the whole thing or is it just gonna do one? I'm gonna hit the green check and unfortunately you get an error. It says fail to generate fill pattern instances, okay. Don't let your Fitbit get too high. All we have to do is go or reattach it to the original face. So turn the original solid body on, clear this out, and then pick the original face there where we started, okay? And when you do that, hit the green check, okay, guess what? It's now reassociated, and guess what? I've got the two bodies that I started with, the flat plate, and I've got my curved plates. I don't need to see this one. 
I'm going to turn it on, which is pretty crazy, right? Think about how much time that would have taken you to recreate that had you done a seed. And if you had changed that from a circle to a diamond, how much ketchup and mustard, as I call it, would have been in your feature tree. Now let's play around with move copy bodies to create a shape. Hey, maybe we didn't know we could create. So I'm going to pick on move copy bodies. I'm going to put it on copy and let's do two instances of this. Okay. Now let's play around with the translate tool here. I can just pull on the X axis here. And notice I'm creating a pattern. Again, the shape, the body, everything's coming. And I can pattern it in three directions, X, Y, Z here, easy. And I just drug it over. Maybe I want to be very specific. I want these at 4.5 or whatever I want. Now, and I can get very detailed, very granular. Now, let me show you a neat little trick here. I'm going to zoom in on this corner. And I want to pattern this body from this point down to the vertex on the bottom. But notice what happened. My X, Y, Z is gone. So at that second vertex point, just pick that endpoint of that plate there. And guess what? There's my part. So if I want, only wanted two, I could totally do it. So when I use the translate tool, whoops, make sure I hit copy. Whoops, a little too fast. Sorry about that. Notice here, I've got this crazy part. I don't know what it is, but I was able to create it, right? So let's roll it back. I always think of one of those orange matchbox tracks, right? So let's play around with move copy bodies one more time here. And let's take this part. And what I want to use here is I want to create seven instances of this part. Okay. And I don't want to translate. I'm going to use the rotate tool. Okay. Now by default, the XYZ that you see right here is where the triad is located currently. If I hit the X and I put 45 degrees here, whoops, let me, I must have accidentally unchecked copy. Now I got a preview of those seven bodies. So that light that I showed you at the beginning that we're gonna create is there. Now, another little tip and trick is with every feature, there's a little question mark in that feature manager tree. You can scroll up and down, we can do this configurations, we can get pretty crazy. And if I just hit the green check here, think about where we started. We started with a flat plate, we we're able to change the pattern and we never created a seed feature. So let's go in here and I'm going to use cut with surface. And again, I started out thinking I wanted to create a little S-shaped plate. And now my brain is thinking, I want to create a light. And that's the beauty of SolidWorks. So there's my part. And when you were to look at this part on screen, you might wonder how in the world did we create that? And it was really just a couple of quick commands. If I isolate this piece, that looks really awesome, right? Nice little part of it. The interesting part is now it's in a bunch of different bodies and I need to combine it together. So I can just use the combine tool to bring all these together. And I'll just talk a little bit about the features and benefits here of our part as this thing it runs over here on the screen. It's control tab, okay? The control tab allows us to go between two SOLIDWORKS files. I was able to go on the original and the second part, no problem, okay? Um, keep going. And then the D key. The D key allows you to move the confirmation center right to the end of your arrow. We were able to create a pattern without a seed feature, and it allowed us to edit this part much faster. Is it perfect for every instance? Is it perfect for every case? No. But hopefully you saw something new, right? We used offset surface, the deform tool, thicken body, and patterned our bodies around to create what started out as a plate I was trying to create this little S-shaped filter and somehow turned into this basket filter or what I'm gonna turn it into is a light. And I'm gonna make that part. So creating a complex part using move bodies and just a couple simple patterns is a pretty crazy way to do that. So hopefully you guys and ladies joining in saw something neat and cool in there. All right, Wes, you ready to show some cool tips and tricks on whole wizard and weldments? Yeah, Dave. Hey, that that was that was awesome. Um, all the different methods for that, creating patterns using the move copy uh, bodies feature, and not always just sticking with pa the, the patterning tool. That uh, can all be done as well with the copy body. Very, very, very interesting to see that being done with that method. But yeah, we'll go ahead and get started on the uh, on this last the, this last portion. And so for this, I created a, a weldment, and then I basically kind of a triangular shape using a triangle profile with weldments. And so I've got three three bodies here, a weldment body uh, that we're going to look at. We're going to do um, 
using the whole wizard again, uh, we're going to go in and we're going to walk through this and we're just going to create a quick setup here using a number seven or seven metric. Uh, we're going to use the up to surface for in condition. And so essentially that allows us, if we click there in the box below that, that's going to uh, let us choose which face we actually want to, or surface that we want to be up to. So there we go, I'm going to choose that face. And for positions, I'm going to come out and we will left click on this surface here. It needs to be a planar surface when you're using whole wizard. So that's, we're fine there. We're going to, I'm going to use the center line tool uh, rather than just click individual points out there or in dimension later. I'm going to use a center line here, construction geometry, and I'm going to attach those to the midpoints of those edges. And I'm going to use the segment tool rather than individually clicking on. I want five holes in there, and those five holes using this method will be equally spaced across the length of that construction line. So a quick way uh, to add uh, holes using the hole wizard is use a segment tool while you're in the uh, locate profile option setting there. And we'll do the same here. So we're going to kind of wash and repeat what we did earlier. I'm just going to control drag that feature over, sort of locate it onto the other face, opposite the uh, first face there. We're going to have to do a little work again. But again, this is just going in. We're going to edit this sketch. From here, uh, we're going to go in. And there's the uh, profile sketch. We're going, to, we're going to work on the actual placement sketch here. So I do need to reattach the center line, the endpoints back so that they're coincident to the midpoint of this edge. That's what I want, at least in this case. And then again, down on this end, we'll kind of work that in there and fix that. So we're just left clicking, dragging and reattaching to midpoints on edges. And I want one less uh, hole on this side. So I'm gonna just simply select it and delete. Now I have four holes using the segment tool, which creates equally spaced uh, segments there for us. So now I have four on one side, five on the other. So quick, quick method for using the whole wizard again is you can use the copy feature in using the whole wizard as well. Earlier we did the whole extrude with a sketch. Next up we're going to do is a circular pattern to, 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 pop, to populate that around our part on the other two weldments, weldment bodies. So I went ahead and uh, to save a little time I created an axis that we're going to uh, around the center of this triangle and so we're going to we're going to copy or not copy but we're going to pattern each of those whole wizard around our model there but really the tip on it, if you've never used the segment tool that's a quick way to get holes placed in there and uh, into a model and using the circular tool as well inside of a weldment is is is, is very advantageous as well so now we've got this uh, three body weldment here with our pattern and if I click on the circular pattern we see that the seed pattern is in pink so remember that anytime you click on a pattern uh, the seed pattern will always be in pink and the others will be I forget whether it's yellow or blue but the pink is the indicator so we're going to use the mirror and I'm just going to kind of scroll through my feature tree here and I'm just simply using the mirror tool the mirror command and patterns to select one of the planar faces on our triangles here and kind of work through and I just thought it'd be kind of cool to uh, walk through and just show uh, how how to just create kind of a kind of a cool design here. It's uh, not necessarily anything particular, but I'm just simply selecting uh, on different planar faces to get the shape, the desired effect here, the outcome that I'm looking for. So you can kind of see this is updating uh, fairly quick, and so there's there's half of my half of my model, and now on the last mirror that we see here, I'll mirror about the top section of that off one of the faces and we'll uh, produce that uh, other side of that. So we kind of get this little, I call it, I call it the, my metal snowflake weldment there. There's 192 bodies in there uh, and several holes there. So uh, kind of a you know, kind of a neat project there. But I just wanted to show that, the, you know, the patterning works well with weldments and then the segment line uh, using the equal spacing can be a big time saver uh, when doing sketches, especially if you have lots of sketches that uh, may use an equally spaced uh, hole. So that's that's kind of what I had for the day, and uh, we we definitely appreciate everyone that sets in on these uh, on these webinars and listens to uh, you know things that we, we we're trying to share with everyone. And uh, and uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, be sure to let us know. And Dave, did you have anything you wanted to throw in? No, just hopefully everybody saw something. I think we were scheduled between 35 to 45 minutes. 
Uh, we tried to leave some time here on the back end in case there was any questions. Um, the main thing is hopefully you saw some different techniques. Like if we kind of review what we started with, we started with, okay, how do we create the pattern? Now we understand how SolidWorks creates that pattern, how it's interpreting the sketches and the features. We figured out, okay, which is the faster method? Uh, then we went over to, you did the up to reference and then showed that awesome trick of dragging and dropping the feature over. Super fast way to recreate it without going in, making all new sketches. I mean, because you put that symmetry relationship on that one, that one works so cool. And then we, you know, using whole wizard and the geometry pattern, we went into that. And then we created the pattern again without a seed, which is pretty awesome. Now it is limited, I guess, in, in some of its shapes, circle, square, polygons, or the diamond, but it's a pretty awesome way to do it. And then I love the way you just showed how to copy the whole wizard feature over. That's a cool one. I, that's that's one I'm going to steal and use quite often on you. So um, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat and uh, we'll stop the recording here, but we're going to go ahead and open it up the forum to do in the questions. And we'll start answering all the questions that are in the forum. Yeah. One question here, Dad. When, when will the recording be available? I've been a few weeks, a couple of weeks should be. Yeah. Would that would that be accurate, Dave? Yeah, our goal is, you know, you and I, uh, we should get a link uh, within the next couple of days where we'll go in, we'll scrub the audio, make sure it sounds nice and clean. But I would think within a week to two weeks, I think that's fair. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, so a question about, did you say that the uh, cut up to surface runs faster than through all? Dave, were you talking about that or was that myself that we're talking about the... Uh... I was using that. So think about if you had a multi-body part and you had multiple parts in which that through all was going through or you used, you know, it's going through all those multi-bodies. Whereas if I did up to surface and I just picked the back side of that plate in that instance, the up to surface would be faster. It is a little bit of a trial and error. So I, when I'm dealing with patterns, I will try up to next or up to reference, I mean, up to surface, or I'll try the through all just to see which pattern is creating the fastest turnaround for me. So that's where that came from. Yeah, Wes. Okay, good and question. Another, another question here. Uh, someone had missed the first few minutes. Uh, that's okay. We're going to have a recording for you and a, and a link to find that and uh, when that's when that's uh, when that's available. So no no uh, no dread there. And again, someone's asking when the, when will the recording be available for future reference, and we'll get that out as soon as possible. And, and whatever Dave just said, that's the answer. So. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> But yeah, it'll be it'll be a few days, and uh, but yeah, we'll go. yeah, you're welcome, everyone. Uh, we 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 enjoy doing this. We love putting on these presentations, and uh, if you need more information or would like to see more, be sure to uh, to scan one of our QR codes, or go to GoEngineer.com, and uh, make sure you check that check our website out. Tons and tons of information on our website. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel as well, uh, with just thousands, literally thousands of how-to videos. So there's not much that we don't cover on those two areas. Our GoEngineer.com, we're pretty proud of, and the uh, and our YouTube channel as well. So. Any other questions in the chat there, Wes? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's I think that's it. Uh, let's see how often do do uh, well, one more question. How often do you do these tips and tricks sessions? Dave, what, what uh, overall, what, what, is, what is our group? What do you think we do tips and how often? Oh, man, that, that's a great question, a really intelligent question that I don't know that I have the answer to. I, I know that we put out a lot of videos. I don't know that we necessarily title them tips and tricks, um, but maybe we should do more that say tips and tricks so you know kind of how to find these little nuggets that are, that are in here, these little Easter eggs as they call it. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I know yeah, we I'm going to just have to look at our YouTube a couple channel of what the dates are. What I mean, it's it's a constant flow, though. This isn't something yeah. random once in a while, I guess, is yeah. the best answer I have for that. Yeah, you know, we have a couple hundred engineers on staff, AEs, that are working, you know, diligently to provide content for everyone. Um, 
you know, are these things come out, you know, whether they're, you know, a large assemblies webinar or um, like we did on the smoker one, you know, a lot of sheet metal tips and tricks, cam tips and tricks. I think we did visualize and sim on it. So depending on the webinar, there's usually a lot of tips and tricks, but, um, you know, maybe this is something we need to do more of. Someone, someone's asking about uh, or, or mentioned the, uh, the the control drag features. And so that, mm -hmm. that's good. It's always good to hear someone learn something and pick something up new. That's kind of what mm -hmm. it's about in SolidWorks. Uh, you, uh, everybody's different, has a different skill set. And even if you've been using SolidWorks for 20 years, and I have been over 20 years, I've been teaching it for several years, I always learn something new every time I teach or get into uh, working with SolidWorks. So you never stop learning. Uh, and then... Uh, that's true. The other day I was showing a, a, a co-worker the, the way to create a pattern without creating the seed feature first. And they were like, we were originally talking about it and they're like, no way. And I'm like, let's jump on and I'll show you. And then they were like, well, I'll be. That's been there the whole time. I'm like, yep. <laughs> don't worry. I just found it too. <laughs> yeah. Someone's asking, uh, can we control the patterns with equations to have more control of the part? Uh, uh, for example, or to suppress holes. Absolutely, so equations and configurations, like the uh, the hole patterns that I use, each of those features are, are can be configured separately. So if I wanted to change the diameter of one of those cuts versus the other, I can I can configure that so that they 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 stand alone, and then you can get into the equation, especially with the body move. Uh, that's actually kind of new, and I think in 2023 using equations in the in the copy move uh, right day is that 23 that came out or was it 22 it's within the last three years now i can't pinpoint which year i was thinking 22 you said 23 so we'll go 22 and a half <laughs> okay yeah but That's i think it's it. somewhere so that definitely answers yes to those and uh someone said i thank you for uh for asking for, for more types of these sessions we appreciate hearing uh, praise so and then uh Someone's asking the best source to find that there is your YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Yep. It'll be on the Go Engineer so YouTube Dave channel for a while. And, and then Dave, you know, you threw in uh, several, if anybody wants to go back and watch this when it comes out again, Dave threw in several short cut keys. And of course we kept it compact as possible, 30 minutes. Uh, so some of those may have flew by, but there was a lot of, lot of, a lot of clues to shortcut keys and uh, things that he did, especially love that. S key bringing up the uh, search search tool and being able to search for commands right there and then drag that command into your uh, into your quick uh, quick access uh, search bar there and uh, so that's that's that, those are great yeah you know maybe we need to do a little session on shortcuts like that but I think I did one not long ago and it's on the Go Engineer site about using the shortcut keyboard uh, commands. Where you hit like S and that brings up the shortcut manager and D does certain things and then how to program yeah. those and how to set those all up. Like again, what we're trying to do is prevent the mouse from traveling all across the screen from the center of the screen or bottom right all the way to the top left just to hit the OK button. How can I do that? I don't want to go all the way to the top right either, but the D key moves that confirmation, the yay or nay, the green check or the X, right there to the end of your mouse. So Again, it kind of keeps us focused on the screen and then just quick key and go. And I guess you could also right click on your mouse on these commands and execute it as well. Another way to do it, I'm just used to kind of driving with the mouse and one hand on the keyboard and just kind of click, 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 and moving the mouse and, 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 and using those quick keys or hot keys, if you want to call it that. We've got a couple more comments and uh... The session on shortcuts would be great, saving nice miles. And I think Dave was kind of talking about that. The YouTube channel, if you, once you get into our channel, just do a search and just type in shortcut. All right. I think that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, let's 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 call it a wrap.